Mr. Nichols. My name is Brian Nichols. I'm a retired environmental scientist with the federal government, and I'm speaking today as a private citizen. The focus of my presentation is the health impacts of the exhaust of diesel engine buses on people in the downtown and other vehicle congested areas of the city. I am speaking on this subject because I believe it to be a key aspect of the trolleybus issue. I, I have a personal interest also in this issue because I live in the downtown area. First, a few words about diesel fuel, diesel fuel and diesel exhaust, um, information you're all familiar with, but it is relevant to this topic. When an engine burns diesel fuel, it emits an exhaust, as an exhaust, a complex mixture of thousands of gases and fine particles, commonly referred to as soot. So you can see it's a very, very complex um, co um, medium. This exhaust includes many known or suspected cancer-causing substances such as benzene, arsenic, formaldehyde and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PIHs. The health impacts of diesel exhaust is a subject of considerable interest in the public health and relevant scientific research fields and many reports have been published on it. The issue is, of course, this issue of course is not unique to buses. Other vehicles have diesel engines, as you all know. Now I'd like to just, re just view the views of a few key organizations who've commented on this issue of um, diesel uh, um, exhaust pollution. Many health, respected health and environmental organizations have expressed concern about the health effects of diesel exhaust. These include the American Cancer Society, the Canadian Cancer Society, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, that's a World Health Organization body, Environment Canada, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and so on. And just for as one example, I'd like to quote a statement, a 2008 statement from the American Cancer Society's website, and I quote, Prolonged exposure to diesel exhaust probably increases the risk of lung cancer and maybe other cancers too. Parts of diesel exhaust, such as soot and PAHs, have been shown to cause cancer. Several government and other research organizations have stated that diesel exhaust probably causes cancer in humans and that the exposure of people to this exhaust should be restricted. Another reason for limiting exposure is that diesel exhaust, like many other air pollutants, also causes lung, heart and other health problems. Short-term exposure to diesel exhaust in itself is unlikely, and, and I, I emphasize that, is unlikely to affect anyone's risk of developing lung cancer. However, regulatory and other agencies, such as the ones that I've listed, continue to look for ways to limit diesel exhaust exposure of the general public and workers, because such exposure is widespread and the combined risk, combined risk, for example, with other contaminants such as tobacco smoke, which uh, those of us who don't smoke are, are, are open to in second-hand smoke, may be considerable. We just don't know in detail the details of this for, for any certainty. What is being done to address the problem? As is the case in, in other fields, um, Improvements are continually being made to address problems such as the ones I've described for diesel fuel and diesel exhaust. Uh, in, the, in the States, in California, for example, improvements have been made to diesel fuel and diesel engines so that their resources board now says that by 2010, uh, particulate levels will have been reduced, reduced by 75%. In Canada, there's the Environment Canada's Urban Transit Bus Refit Project, Retrofit Project, which Edmonton Transit was involved in and more recently we now have what are called clean diesel engines installed in Edmonton's latest diesel buses. Improvements are being made but caution is called for in dealing with this problem because of the complex nature of diesel exhaust and the many, as I said, the many thousands of components of that exhaust. In conclusion, while the debate on health impacts of street level emissions from diesel vehicles shows no sign of easing, and while modifications are being made to diesel fuels 
and diesel engines to reduce harmful emissions, key international and national health environmental agencies still have concerns. And of course it's important to note that uh, with regard to street level emissions of diesel engines that breathe indirectly whereas trolleybuses do not have this problem. Thank you Mr Nichols.